glad to see you, gentlemen. And happy to report that my speaking engagement was worthwhile. You found the audience receptive to our idea of world peace? Most receptive. The average man and woman want international control to prevent war and hate warmongers as much as we do. Once the nations agree to that, we're really started on the road to peace. Have you heard from Rod Stanton since our message to him that Jeffrey London is Sir Eric Hazarius? Yes, and Rod has really accomplished something. Dr. Elmore, the head of Sir Eric's archaeological expedition, has agreed to work with him and Tal Shan. That's the first good news we've had from Pendrang. And there can be no doubt that Dr. Greb, who is with you, Dr. Elmore, is Sir Eric's man. No doubt at all. You say that you and Rod separated. Where's Rod now? He should be at the sealed tomb of the glowing goddess. He figured Greb was going there. He's probably right. Then he'll be on hand if Greb opens the tomb. Greb! What's the matter? Stanton just came out of the jungle and he's headed here. Stanton. No. We'll let him come in and enter the tomb and serve as our guinea pig. I told you before, Grab, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> Did you see Stanton in there? I didn't see anything. No man can inhale that gas and live. Then nobody can get anything out of that. At least not until some way is found to shut off that gas. But we'll let Elmore worry about that. Some kind of poison gas in the tomb of the glowing goddess, Sir Eric. A workman was killed by it before Stanton died. Can the gas be pumped out so we can work in there? If we can find how it gets in. You said there was no gas present when you first broke the seal on the door. Not a bit. The device was installed to prevent trespassing, but it also protects what we want. That rare element that you think is in the statue. With meteorium, this is a perfect defense against the atomic bomb and the world at our feet. Without it, we have nothing but an impractical idea. I know that. Our problem is to make it safe to examine the statue so that Dr. Elmore can go ahead with his work. With Stanton dead, that shouldn't be too difficult. Mr. Stanton, you are kind to stop and talk to me, Mr. Stanton. I find you very interesting. That man down there, Carl, told you the blind beggar. 
Stanton, take care of him after he gets past me. Remember what I said and be on guard. Thanks, I will. Oh, sir. The street doesn't seem wide enough for both of us, Sir Eric. You insist upon calling me Sir Eric Hazarius. You're equally insistent on being called Jeffrey Linden, I know. But I prefer your real name. You know, Stanton, I have a feeling that you're going to leave here rather suddenly. There's no way in or out for several months. I'll be here that long. I'd give you odds on that if I were a gambler. It's too bad you're not. I'd risk a couple of hundred. Time will tell. It usually does, Sir Eric. <clears throat> Confidentially, just between the two of us, I am really Jeffrey London. I've been expecting something like this to happen. So have I. That's why I'm still alive. That sure thing you were talking about didn't work, did it? I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm holding you for murder. Take a look under that man. He's got a gun in his hand and fired first. All right, come on, move on. Move on. Either of you know him? I think he worked for... Uh, he was one of my men. Probably had a personal grudge against Stanton and tried to settle it. I shouldn't be at all surprised, Captain Hammond. Watch your step in the future, Stanton. We don't like shooting on the streets. Neither do I. For your trouble, Captain. Thanks. Don't worry. I'll take care of everything. What did you expect to gain by presenting a $5,000 banknote to Doc Harris? What did I have to lose? $5,000 might have proved to be a good investment if your manager hadn't been quite so loyal. Thanks for the compliment. Also for the five grand. I've come to the conclusion, Mr. Malvern, that the original bargain I made with you was a poor one. One third of all profits from what I hope to find a magnificent fortune. You tricked the world for years by hiding behind Sir Eric. You've just tried to bribe Harris. Did you think me fool enough not to expect treachery? No, but the nature of what I hope to find through my expedition compels me to be honest with you. That's better. Something of world importance or war importance? I cannot answer without revealing my secret, and I don't intend to do it. As a matter of fact, it's a part of our agreement. Agreements change in Pendrang, depending upon what I think best for me. My control here gives me that advantage. For the time, it is so. That sounded like a declaration of war to me. It was. Have they cleaned you out, system? Just about, Mr. Malvern. Somehow, my plan of strategy doesn't work the way it should. Keep trying. If you need some more cash, look me up. Well, I, I don't know how to thank you. Forget it. Maybe sometime you can do me a favor. With all your authority, Indra, he could make trouble. Perhaps. But Mr. Malvern has no ally. And I can have two. Rod Stanton and Tal Shan? Count them as one. They're dependable represent a very powerful organization and could prove a deciding factor should I need them, and they aren't interested in profits. Okay, for one, but who's the other? Dr. Elmore, an honest man, a friend of Stanton's, and the one person sure to know what the expedition finds. Professor Grebb is a scientist with an excellent reputation. He's been with me since the beginning of the expedition and has proved to be a most valuable and cooperative assistant. But would Rod or Tal Shan have said what they did about him if it weren't true? Their suspicions about Greb are as unfounded as those about Jeffrey London being Sir Eric Hazari's. Well, nevertheless, if I were you, I wouldn't let Jeffrey London see the translation of that broken plaque until you're 
definitely certain. Now listen to me, Marjorie. Oh, let's not argue, Dad. But for once, be guided by me. <laughs> Stop that. Promise? You minx. You can wrap me around your little finger. Promise? All right, I promise. Have you finished the translation? Yes. Now, where are we hide it? Well, the most obvious place would be the best. No one will think of looking under these old records. Those belong to Greb. I know it. Going out to the excavations? Want to come along? I'd like to see you go without me. Rod, your plan worked. So far, so good. We have one advantage over Sir Eric. We know that Greb is his man. And he has every reason to believe that you, Dr. Elmore, still think he is Jeffrey London. Now what? That depends on the translation your father wrote. According to Dr. Elmore's translation, the cave of eternal light should be about here. That's on the other side of the lake. Mm -hmm. You'd better get out there, Greb. Now, perhaps that is our only chance. What do you mean by that? Well, my tests show there is no meteorium in the samples that you brought me from the statue of the glowing goddess. So the only thing to do is to go out there and see what you can find. But what if I run into Elmore? I'll go with you. Would that be advisable? To date, you've shown no interest in the excavations. He's right, Sir Eric. It might start the doctor thinking about what Stanton told him. At present, I'm sure he thinks you're Jeffrey London. Mm. Well, use my speedboat and take Marlow. Right. I'll report what we find by radio. Good. I almost forgot. I took a picture of that half plaque that uh, Dr. Elmore has. Gaffin will develop the film immediately. Oh, yes. This is an enlargement of the picture taken by Greb with his fountain pen camera. And uh, this is an enlargement of the tablet found earlier. Now, when you compare the two, and then compare the translations of each made by Dr. Elmore, you find a discrepancy. In other words, the second translation is false. It was planted for Greb to find. <laughs> Dr. Elmore is a little more clever than I thought. Kurtz, contact Greb on the speedboat. What are you going to tell Elmore if he's beat us to it? Well, I found the translation among my papers, reported to Mr. London, and was ordered to follow it up. Headquarters calling G-14. Urgent. Come in, G-14. G-14, answering your call. Over. You're headed into a trap on the other side of the lake. Turn back. A trap? OK. What's that about a trap? Orders are to turn back. Something's gone wrong. Let him have. 
have a grenade. That ought to stop him. 